They shanked him. They shanked them. Texas gets into the college football playoff. Florida State gets left out of the college football playoff. This is the Big 12 Watch. I am your host, Josh. Neighbors, we're doing this live. We're also going to put this up uh, as a show afterwards, reacting to the college football playoff rankings. Uh, the Texas Longhorns are in the college football playoff. For back-to-back years, the Big 12 Conference will have a team in the college football playoff, and it is the Texas Longhorns who we represent in the Big 12 in 2023 in the college football playoff, uh, the top four. We'll react to all of that. Texas matchup with Washington. We will ra- react to that too. Once again, this is the Big 12 Watch. I am your host, Josh Neighbors. You guys can find us here on YouTube, wherever you all get your podcasts as well. We are part of the 365 Sports Network. The channel is Crystal Ball College Football. Please follow us on Twitter at NWPod365. You guys can find me at Josh Neighbors underscore as well. All right, folks. So uh, we just got the college football playoff rankings. They just came in. Your top four, Michigan is number one. Number two is Washington. The Texas Longhorns are number three. And at number four, the Florida State Seminoles get left out. The Alabama Crimson Tide are in. FSU was six. Georgia, uh, Georgia, excuse me, was number six. FSU was number five. So uh, this is a Big 12 program. We cover the Big 12. That is the main focus. The show is called the Big 12 Watch, right? Uh, that is kind of the, the entire the entire you know part of this show. Um, the, the big story here about the sport is going to start at number four. And so I think we have to start there as well. So at number four, the committee chooses to go with Alabama at 12 and one as the SEC champion over a 13 and O Florida state team. Now this choice is pretty clear. The only reason this choice is being made is because, uh, um, you know, Florida state is on not just their backup quarterback, but now they are on their third string quarterback. Now we've got no idea whether backup Tate Rodemaker could get healthy in time for a semifinal game. That's not, that's not known at this point in time. What is known, though, is the issue at hand here is that they played every single team on their schedule. They beat every single team on their schedule. And still, as a Power 5 champion undefeated, they are left off. And I would say this to start off. This is not about an argument of which team would Michigan rather play or What would the point spread be if both these teams played? That's not what matters here. What matters here is your resume. We have to evaluate you for what your resume is. Texas is number three because of how strong their resume is. So all these hypothetical arguments about like what we're, you know, eye test or what we're seeing, like eye test can be there, sure. But guys, what got Texas to number three is the fact that Hey, look, let's use some let's use some logic here. They're 12 and 1. And if we're going to put Bama at a certain spot, Texas must be ahead of them because we have to honor results. All right. Results are what matter in this business. Florida State's results are perfection. And Florida State's results are they were perfect, but uh, the, the end of the day is now it's but they're injured. It should be. Wow, Florida State is perfect despite the fact that they were injured. This is a television product. I understand that. I get that. But our sport, sports in general, should should reward results. Everybody complains about participation trophies. Everybody gets a trophy, whatever. Florida State, there's none of that. They were perfect. They were perfect in spite of being injured at the most important position in the sport and in arguably like the most important position in all of sports, Florida state was perfect this year. Did every game look perfect? No, not everybody's games look perfect. Michigan was perfect, but boy, do they have some games? They didn't look very good. Right. But they ended up being perfect. Washington, they played what? Seven straight one score games, seven straight games where it was like, you know, it was one point or, or two point, uh, you know, eight, I think nine and 10, they beat Stanford by like 10, whatever, but they were still perfect. They were still were 
Florida State had good enough wins. They beat LSU on a neutral field. They dog walked them on a neutral field, right? They blew them out in the second half of that game. They beat Clemson on the road. They really kind of beat the brakes off Louisville last night defensively. Louisville was helpless on offense, and Florida State's offense did enough. Like, you need to give Florida State a chance. It's not It's not fair that they get left out of this. Look, you can argue about who's a better team or not. You ha- Once we saw Texas at number three, it was over because the choice between Texas and Alabama is clear. The choice between Florida State and Alabama, at least the one that you knew that they were going to make, was clear for them. They were going to go with Alabama all the time. And also, from a TV perspective, you think it's better because the injury is not there. It's not happening for the, for Alabama, obviously. And what does it create in that 1-4 matchup? It guarantees a very strong matchup off the bat, and that matchup is Alabama, right, uh, against Michigan. And so you are guaranteed, guaranteed at least one monster TV game. That is going to be a massive, massive ratings giant when Alabama takes on Michigan. Two of the, and arguably two of the best brands in the sport, uh, two of the you know, top four or five brands, period. Obviously coaches who are at the top of their game, Jim Harbaugh, a lightning rod in both NFL and in college circles, it's going to be it's going to be huge numbers. Texas Washington will do well. It will not do the kind of numbers that we are going to see. But I'll, I'll tell you what, guys. Just because it's the SEC, it's the SEC champion. I don't even think that was the conversation here. I do not think that was the conversation. I think the conversation. And look, if you want to make this argument, you may make it. I don't believe in this, but you may make it. If you want to say, well. The injuries are hurting Florida State, and so because of that, we think Alabama is a better team. We love their win over Georgia. This is not about the Southeastern Conference. The SEC, This is not about the SEC. This is about Florida State's quarterbacks getting hurt. And so now we've got, an inju- we've got a question about injuries. Now, injuries are being factored in, not results, injuries. This is why the NFL is better. The NFL doesn't get to slide one team in because your quarterback got healthy. They expand the playoff maybe for that reason. And now we are seeing that the college football playoff is expanding the playoff too, and they're going that direction. But this is the problem now. It's like, well, their quarterbacks are hurt. They still won the damn games. They still won the damn games. Give them credit for that. They've done nothing wrong. Now you now they are being penalized for losing players in the most violent sport that's out there, besides maybe rugby or whatever. This is a violent sport. You will lose players. We should reward you for winning in spite of that. Texas gets a good pat on the back, as they should, because guess what? They look awesome, and Jonathan Brooks is out. And for part of the season, they lost Quinn Ewers and damn near lost games, but did they? No, they did not. They did not lose the games, and they rallied, and they came back, and they won. We should be in this sport rewarding that. I don't care about the results. Guess what? Most of the games are blowouts anyway. One-way traffic is norm is the norm. Last year, the semifinals being good, we got lucky. We got we were very fortunate that we got two good games last year because typically, typically that's not the case. These games are typically blowouts. And so that's my problem is like guys, I don't care about if you're trying to make a better game. You've got to evaluate these teams for what they are. If you want to do best four teams, well, I'm sorry, let's just chop off most of the country and look at recruiting ratings and say, well, these are actually the only teams that we can consider. Cincinnati, a couple years ago, we can't really put them in. And mind you, Cincinnati did better than most teams do against Alabama, right? They did, they better better than most teams in the, in the saving era against Alabama and the CFP. We cannot evaluate this way. Also, they're moving this thing to 12. And I'm not saying this would be criteria, but like, why are we moving this to 12? Well, we're adding in automatic bids and there's discussion the rest of the way there, but there is not going to be any conversation about an ACC champion next year. There is this year because of their injuries. Their wins are good enough. Like we've seen some teams with some weak victories go in there before at the end of the year with, with, with the final rankings, but there's no question this year about these final rankings about like about wins and losses, right? There's no question about wins and losses. This is about injuries. And that's sad because you're taking this away from from kids who went out there and earned it. Guys, 
Alabama has played a member of the college football playoff field. They got to do it on their home field. They lost the game. They did. They lost the game. All right. Well, it was Florida State's best win. They played the Heisman Trophy winner neutral field. They beat them by four score, three scores, whatever it ended up being. Right. They played Clemson, a ranked team on the road. They they got it out and got the win in the end. They played neutral field. Louisville's got, you know, it was top uh, 15 team at the time when they played them. They beat them and they weren't at full strength. They should be credited for it. Not dinged. Not dinged. Okay. I understand there's hesitation. I understand television product, and that's what this is in the end. But damn it, I want to root for, I want to watch sports that reward winning, period, point blank. That's why, guys, this is a gross sport for a lot of reasons. All right. If you are a talented coach, you usually find your way back into places despite what you might have done. Bobby Petrino is back at Arkansas. Hugh Freeze is back at Auburn. You know why? Because the guys win. We reward winning. Money is usually going to winners. Florida State's a winner. They weren't a loser once this year. They have not been a loser once this season. That's a winning program. They're undefeated, unblemished, despite the fact they got injured, not because of it. Like, like it's, you know, now they're being dinged because of the injuries. It's ridiculous to me. It's ridiculous to me. Also, you all may send your chats. I will answer them as we go along uh, on the live stream. This will also be posted later on. We also have a Willie Fritz reaction video to being hired at Houston coming up later. But my Lord, folks, my Lord, this is this is a travesty. It is. I mean, look, Alabama how it was awesome at the end of the year. And you could say, hey, Georgia and Alabama, two of the most deserving teams are two of the best teams in the country. Yes, but we're a, it's only four. It's selected for a reason. We have to use resumes and, you know, here's the thing, like first off, first things first, head to head wins. That's what matters to me. Okay. It, it, you know, uh, Washington and Washington and, and Michigan are in They're They're, they're implied in. All right. So if we are saying Texas 12 and one, and here's the thing, guys, at this point in time, the best, the best win in the country right now, still to this point, the best win to date anybody has is Texas on Alabama's field by double digits. It's the best win we have to date. All right, they're in. Okay. So like they they are in. That, you know, but here's the thing. In my book, Florida State's 13 and 0 actually puts them ahead of Texas. I think all three 13 and 0s should be first and then we should be evaluating the next two, the next three, right? So the conversation is between four teams, Ohio State, Georgia, Alabama, and Florida State. What I'm going to say then, okay, Conference champions, stand up, please. You know, it's a, all these people are standing. All right, stand up. Okay, Ohio State uh, sits down. Georgia sits down, right? Uh, you can even say, hey, teams of 12 wins, stand up. Ohio State sits down, right? Conference champions, please remain standing. Okay, Georgia sits down. All right, Alabama and Texas are left. Hey, did you all play? I'm looking at head-to-heads here. Did you all play? Oh, you did. You are both conference champions who played. And actually, like, there's a case here, guys, that, well, there's no case you could not, you know, get Texas without a conference championship. But like, there's a case, hey, if, if, if Texas TCU'd this thing, you know, they could still be, you know, in this thing because of the number one, because of the win over Bama. But like, at, that win is ironclad for them. The conversation should have been Texas and Alabama, and it should not been much of a conversation. It should have been, did you all play? Yes. Oh, it was at Bama. Oh, and Texas won by two scores. End of the talk. End of the conversation, Texas is in. Texas should be your four seed. Texas should be playing Michigan. Florida State should be playing Washington. But because this sport is dumb, uh, this is this is a screw job. I mean, I hate to put it that way. And like I'm not saying the inside fix is in, but what we're valuing in this decision making is we're not valuing the right things. And here's the thing: it gets a little bit easier now because. When we're debating 11 and 12 and 13 and 14, you're not going to get the ironclad credentials that these teams currently have. You're not going to get that, right? It's going to get a little bit, I mean, it might get murkier, but like the the ironclad credentials of a perfect conference champion might be off the board at 11 and 12 and 13. But right now we've got that. So why aren't we using that? All right. Why aren't we using that? Uh, let's see. So let's see. Are we ready for your Crimson Tide to be winning? Are you really going to be coping with them? Nice grammar from Bama Pace. 
I'll tell you what, they might win it all. And here's the thing. I always say this all the time. What happens in the playoff does not always like justify the rankings, right? What happens in a postseason does not always justify the rankings. Just because VCU made the final four a while ago, that team did not deserve to be in the, the, the NCAA tournament. Happens all the time. Teams, you know, like if they're in the first four or whatever, hey, they may not deserve to get into other teams, but they make runs and they get there. That doesn't mean you deserve to be there. Because you are what your resume says you are up to that point. You are not what you do in the playoff. You are, from a resume standpoint, what you are to that point. That's what I'm evaluating off you off of. What have you accomplished to this juncture? Okay, if I'm letting you in, you got to be in. I don't care what it, I don't care. You know who's still with you at this point in time. Like, do you have eligible players? Yes. Welcome in. Welcome in. C go to the playoff. That's the way it should be. It is, it should be. Well, I'm not saying it is, is it, is it deserved? Yeah, it should be deserved. This should be deserved. Earn. Like we, I'm, we're not asking the best four teams. If you want the best four, then just pick your favorite four from the recruiting rankings who had the best seasons. Also Florida State's recruiting, not too bad. Uh, Florida State won every game this year. Won every game they played. Every single one. Alabama did not. And Alabama lost to a team in the field. <laughs> By double digits at home. That happened. That did happen. 12 and one. All right. I mean, like the SEC was also not good non-conference. So you could say the SEC is the best league. That gap this year was not as big as it used to be. I mean, not as big as it used to be. The be What is the best non-conference win the SEC has? It's, is it Missouri beating Kansas State? Is the best non-conference, what, what's the best non-conference win for the Southeastern Conference this season? Is it Kentucky beating Louisville? There's not many. The SEC in conference, that's great. I, you all had a nice, fun season. The Big Ten's conference wasn't very good either, right? They, didn't, they were not great in the conference inside the league. But the SEC, outside of the SEC, the SEC didn't prove shit this year. What did the Southeastern Conference prove outside of its own ranks this season? Nothing. They didn't prove anything. Guess what? Texas isn't an SEC team yet. That's a Big 12 team. They're the Big 12 Conference champion. They beat an SEC opponent in Texas. The SEC says the SEC should have three teams in an 18 playoff. They don't belong this year's four team. Yeah, that might be true next year you know, in an 18 playoff. But we don't have an 18. We have a four team. It is ridiculous to me what we have just seen. And the justification cannot be because it's the SEC champion. The SEC champion, just because of the SEC champion, what did the SEC prove this season? In what game did the SEC prove? Look, guys, Missouri barely beat Kansas State. And I'm, I went to Mizzou. Missouri barely beat them. Great win. I love that win for them this year. But there's nothing the SEC proved outside of their own league. like. The Heisman Trophy winner is on a three-loss SEC team this year, and he should be the Heisman Trophy winner, but that was not an excellent team. They could not stop anybody. Ole Miss was not a great team this year. They were not a great team at all. Not a great team. I mean, this is this is ridiculous. This is like the ultimate television. I mean, and here's the thing. Florida State's a damn good brand. They're a damn good brand. It's it, Bobby Bowden built that thing into a powerhouse because he went and played a bunch. You know what he did? Ironically enough, went and played a bunch of other powerhouses. He was willing to go play the Nebraskas of the world on the road. He was willing to do that. And now we've got a result like this. Leave your comments as well, guys. I'll get to them. Hey, also, if you guys want to leave any super chats, you all may do that. Uh, all right, let's see some of your all's questions. Texas lost to OU. It doesn't matter. They are one of the, they were one of the, definitely they're, they're in, right? Uh, FSU should be over Bama. They deserve it more. I could not agree more. I had a feeling that FSU was going to get left out. They, uh, they did not get style points against Louisville. They barely survived. Louisville is not Georgia. Yes, but they should be rewarded. The fact they did it without their, their top two quarterbacks and their defense dominated that game. Their defense absolutely dominated Louisville in a spot where, Hey, they might've been left in the field for a while. And it might have, you know, might have impacted them. No, they they pushed Louisville around. They gave them no hope. Uh, I mean, they were they were immense that entire game. The defense was uh, okay. No, there's no way Michigan would be left out if JJ got hurt against Iowa. 
Right. You're right. You're right. Uh, I totally agree with that. The CFP committee has just said to the public the regular season does not matter and that CFP without Georgia and Bama cannot exist. I'm not sure, Tyler, if they are saying that. I think what they are saying is injuries should matter, though. So, like, here's what we're saying now at this point. You could have a situation where, let's just say LSU loses to AM. So, let's just say this, right? Let's just say Jaden Daniels, for example, goes down in the final game of the season at half, right? Nine and two LSU. Jaden Daniels goes in, uh, goes goes down, and Grant Nussmeyer comes in, right? This is next season. And they don't look as good, and they lose the game, and they're number, let's just say they're number eight in the country at that point in time. Are we going to evaluate them next year and say, well, Jaden Daniels tore his ACL in the final game, and we don't want to see the backup in the playoffs, so they're out. Like, I do not want injuries to become a part of the evaluation. Or let's just say Alabama, or let's say LSC at that point is, is a nine, uh, nine and nine and, or eight and three team, right? And he goes out, Daniels goes out, and Nussmeyer comes in and doesn't look good. They hang on to win the game. Well, they didn't look good. Nussmeyer is the quarterback now, and Daniels is out, and Daniels is our guy, uh, is, is their guy, so we can't put them in now. Like, no, we should not be evaluating based off of injuries. It should be accomplishment. Accomplishment. I would say this if it was a Big 12 team too. It should be accomplishment. Like not what you would rather see. I'm sorry. That's that's not what you it's not what we're gonna see. So anyone who honestly thinks that Florida State would beat Alabama, I get the Florida State fans are gonna be apoplectic, but the respect they can um, but with respect to them, they can't be objective. Yeah, but this is not neutral field. Would you beat somebody? It's not how rankings, it's not how this works. That is how Vegas makes their odds. Yes, but folks, what did we say? When Oregon played Washington, what did Las Vegas have to say about that? Who was favored second time around? Washington was a nine and a half and closed as a 10 point dog. That is a multi score dog, multi score dog. And they won the game outright for the second time. So we can't say, hey, if you played, if they, they have to play the games, they have to play the games. Michigan against Michigan didn't get much of a chance or uh, TCU did not get much of a chance against Michigan. Did they, they never trailed in that game. Not once never trailed won the game. They got dog walked by Georgia. Sure. Yeah, that happened, but they never trailed in the game against Michigan. They won that game. You have to respect the actual results of the game. FSU got screwed. Robbie Tedford says, I agree with that. Also, folks, you guys can, uh, if you all want to send Super Chat, I do greatly appreciate this. The Big 12 watch for five plus days a week of college football, college basketball, Big 12 content, best place for it. Uh, so I appreciate you all watching and supporting the show here. If they chose Bama and or Georgia being the playoff, then why TF? Do we have football games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm with you on that point. Uh, I see that one again. It's, it's not deserved. I disagree with that very strongly. Uh, let's see. Um, Wondering if all that postseason uh, convecting, I'm not sure what that means, uh, cavetching, threatening to leave under under appreciative Atlantic Coast Conference had any impact? No, I don't think it had any impact at all. Uh, hook em, baby. Congratulations, Pax, to your team. Yep, minus four and a half. Uh, Michigan beats Alabama. Washington beats Texas. Excuse me. Says Jamie. Uh, Texas. Yeah. I mean, look, let's get to the Longhorns. It takes, it's taken us 23 minutes, but I said this yesterday on the instant reaction show. I will say it again too. Texas has been a hammer in their last two games. The one thing Texas really did in the last couple games, this could be to Florida state's detriment in the end is t Texas might've been too much of a hammer, right? What Texas did to Texas tech and what Texas did to Oklahoma State is they put those guys six feet under, and they I think they buried maybe 12 feet, and they might have doubled the whole size. I mean, they just buried teams. And Steve Sarkeesian deserves a ton of credit, and uh, Texas as a team deserves a ton of credit. They overcame an injury to Quinn Ewers middle of the season. They overcame an injury to uh, uh, Jonathan Brooks late in the season. I mean, this team overcame. They were dominant up front on defense. I will say this as we get into the matchup. So Paxton, you're right. And you make this point. I was actually about to, really about to say this. Yes, the one area where we know Texas is weak is the secondary, right? The one area where Texas can be had is the secondary. And I would argue that's what makes this game a lot more exciting. To be quite frank, 
it, so here's what, here's what I would say about this matchup. Like if Texas got Michigan, you actually like Texas chances because Michigan wants to run that football. Right. But to be honest, is there a better defensive front? Are there better players in the entire country up front than Texas has than Tavondre sweat and Byron Murphy? Are there better players up front? I don't know if any teams got Michigan's got some dogs up front, right? But the one thing that we know that Texas can do is move the ball through the air against Michigan. And that can be, or excuse me, Texas can move the ball on the air. And Ohio State did do this against Michigan. So honestly, like if you're Texas, you kind of, Washington, not the worst matchup for you. But honestly, it's the team best equipped to hurt you in the air. I would say that Alabama is too. Michigan is ironically the team worst equipped to hit Texas's faults, right? I mean, who is the best receiver on Michigan? It's most likely Roman Wilson. So if you're Texas, this is actually the worst. This is the worst matchup. This is the team you wanted to play the least. In terms of what they do now, the other way around, I think you could argue, hey, Washington's defense is the worst equipped to handle what Texas does really well. Right. And and here's what I will say about Texas. Texas. I, I want to use a Bobby Petrino ism here I mentioned Petrino twice today. His his game plan is FTS. Right. Feed the studs. There is no better coach in college football at doing that than Steve Sarkeesian. Watch the tape from yesterday. I think Paxton, you can, you're a Texas, resident Texas fan here. You can agree, disagree. Those tight end screens were nasty. Those were awesome. They get worthy of the ball in space. They got backs to the ball very well on screens, right? They got a worthy and Mitchell open. And Mitchell's a big game killer, killer. Nobody does better with the script than Steve Sarkeesian. And the fact that he's got a quarterback that can get the ball to all these guys is big. Um, it felt like in the end for Washington, you know, like here's the deal. I, I, they're gonna have to have Penix throw this ball 40 or 50 times. Uh, they're gonna have to do it. I I wouldn't even try to run the ball. There's no point. There's absolutely no point in trying to run the ball. Oklahoma had a couple runs yesterday, but like, you don't try to establish the run. You try to run the ball later in the game when it's, when it, and you try to break off six, seven yards, but you got to chuck this thing around. You're gonna have to toss this ball around the yard to beat Texas. Does it give your mark a good angle to get FSU to jump to the Big 12? No, I, I don't think it does. I mean, no, I don't know why it would. I, once again, the ACC here, folks, is is not what absolutely killed uh, Florida State. It's not the fact the ACC killed them. Now, you would argue if Alabama was in that spot, they would not leave them out, the third string quarterback, right? Um, and here's the thing. Uh, we saw Ohio State win this damn thing with a third string quarterback. But like I, I think um I think it's the fact that Florida State's third string, like it's not a Cardale Jones type situation. Um and also here's the thing FSU doesn't want to be in the ACC. They they, they don't want to be there. Okay, so like they can't just leave. If they if they could have left by now, they would have left, right? The the Atlantic Coast Conference is not what ends up killing them here. Uh to me, what ends up killing them in this situation is the fact they lost their first two quarterbacks. All right. Am I single? Uh, dating. Dating. Thanks. Yeah. Are you saying, hey, people in the chat, all right? Anybody single out there wants to get somebody? NC State AD voted them out. Yeah, man, it doesn't really matter. Like, it doesn't really matter. Like, they voted them out, too. Like, you can vote on it all you want to. All right? You can, you can vote on it all you want to, baby. I mean, it doesn't matter. Can you, can you get, the, can you get the, the money to get yourself out of it? But for Texas, man, this is a great match. This is a fun matchup, I think. Uh, maybe not the one you wanted because this team can't hurt you. Yeah. And so let's see how many of those guys, receivers, get healthy for, for Washington. But to me, Texas is in a fantastic, fantastic spot. The other one, Michigan, Alabama. Uh, interesting matchup. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. That'll do it for this edition of the Big 12 Watch. Put this thing uh, up here in a couple minutes. But thank you all for watching. You guys can find me on Twitter at NWPod365. You guys can find us on Twitter um, at Josh Neighbors underscore. Find the show wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube as well. All right, folks, talk to you tomorrow.